While the reproductive characteristics and structures of gymnosperms are better adapted than those of ferns for dry land reproduction, they aren't in general as complex, efficient, or colorful as those of angiosperms, the flowering plants. The success of the angiosperms, which in Greek means enclosed seed, is to some extent reflected in the huge number of flowering plants. In all, there are about 250,000 species of flowering plants. Scientists believe angiosperms evolved from gymnosperms. As mentioned earlier, insects, like beetles, occasionally carry pollen from the male cone to the female cone of the gymnosperm. But this process probably represents only a fraction of the fertilization among gymnosperms, since the cones of gymnosperms aren't a particularly obvious or attractive target for most insects. Over time, some gymnosperms probably began to evolve structures that were more attractive and identifiable to insects and other animals than were the cones of conifers. Over millions of years, some plants developed the brightly colored, uniquely shaped, and strongly scented flowers we associate with some angiosperms. However, many other angiosperms, such as grasses and many deciduous trees, develop rather inconspicuous, simple flowers. The majority of plants with less noticeable and only moderately scented flowers are bypassed by insects and pollinate via the wind. The relationship between flowers and the animals that pollinate them is a classic symbiotic or mutually beneficial one. Insects benefit from eating the plant's protein-rich pollen or the sugar-rich nectar. In turn, plants benefit by not having to produce huge amounts of pollen because animals provide a much more direct, efficient mechanism for fertilization than the random whirling flow of the wind. 